Isaiah 61. Yes, sir. Ted, you know how you're, you're, you tell me sometimes you have this protective covering? We're not doing any further than that with it. Well, God said he's going to do that with the wounds of the past. He's going to put a covering on them. They're going to be no more. And it, it's not going to, it's not going to be able to rise up and, and fill your head like it, like it has in the past. He said it's going to be, it's going to change. In fact, it's going to fade into the background, and your new life is going to take such fullness of space that you won't be able to find that past anymore. That he, in other words, he's going to fill you with his spirit and with his word, and then the, the past can't do anything. It, all it can do is lay there and shut up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Okay. Yes, oh God. If that, if I, if I were you, I would think that I would probably think that was the greatest thing that ever hit, because, because of what you've told me. I mean, I would think that. Yeah, yeah just a little. I, no, I don't. He knows. That's all I need to know. Whew. Okay. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Yes, it is. Because the Lord hath anointed me. Why don't you read this with me? Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to, to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Father, I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you for what your word has already done. Lord, I thank you that you're glorified in the house today. Lord, I thank you that your people have received help from you. And Father, we give you a praise and glory for all of it in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. You can sit for just a minute. Just for a minute, yeah. At least a minute. At least that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bye, sweetheart. We love you. Night, Bertie. We love you. Bye-bye. <sighs> the Spirit of the Lord God is upon you. Even right now, it's on you. You may not recognize it, may not feel like it. Who said you had to feel like it? He didn't say anything about the just walking by feeling. He said the just are going to walk by faith. So you're not going to, you may not feel it. In fact, you may feel just the opposite. You may feel that God is as far from you as he could possibly get. Because sometimes that is how it feels. Isn't it? Yep, sometimes it is. But it says the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. I agree with that. Because the Lord has anointed you to preach good tidings unto the meek. Somewhere along the line, Rhonda, you're going to get to preach good tidings to meek and unmeek. Don't make any difference. The word's coming forth. It's going to come out of your mouth, and it's going to be like those rivers of living water that's supposed to come forth from the child of God that is anointed of God to do a work in these last days. That's you. That's you. Each and every one of you can put your own name right in here. Pastor, that is Old Testament. Yep. Same God. Whose Bible is that anyways that you're holding? I hope it's yours. You didn't steal that, did you? 
then it's your Bible, then that word's for you. You can have whatever he says. Okay. So right now you've been anointed to preach good tidings done to the meek and he sent you to bind up the broken hearted. Let me tell you something. Do, one thing that you're not going to do is bind up broken hearted if you run around in that shape yourself and won't get fixed. Woo, thank you Lord. Yeah. If you are holding stuff, I don't mean that maybe that you're being mad about it or whatever. That's not what I mean. But if, it's, if you're holding, I guess we're going to say ought, if you're holding anything, not only with the household of faith, but with family, you've got to fix that. God can't do nothing with you till you do. You're going you're gonna to have to quit. And I don't care how many you're mad at. I don't, I don't care how many of them you could, you'd like to slap the fat right off their faces. It doesn't make any difference. God hasn't called you to slap fat. He has called you to bind up the brokenhearted. Most people only act ugly because they're ugly themselves. There's something ugly on the inside that needs to be restored. It needs to be recreated and re-evaluated re some way. The Spirit of God has to take care of it and make you so that you are able to be forgiving. You don't know what they did. I don't care what they did. If he will call me to, to, to task and make me forgive and pray for the woman that was dating my husband, you're going to do it too. Sorry, that's the way it is. If he's going to ask me too, he's going to ask you too because you have to be forgiving. Well, I'll forgive it, but I ain't going to be around it. Yes, you are. Don't you tell me you're not. You're going to take them on as a prayer burden. God's going to put it on you anyways. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm asking him to do it. If you won't let go of it, God's going to put a prayer burden for that person on you. You will be on your face before God praying for that person. And not only that, he's going to make you do good for them. You will do good to them and for them. And you will pray good on them. Ooh, yes, you will. You do, I mean, you can sit there and say, yes, you are, trust me. And you'll say, yeah, but God, I can't pray for them. I don't even know how to pray for them. Yes, you do, pray in tongues. And so there you are trying to pray in tongues with your teeth gritted. It's harder to speak language that way, you know that? Amen. Oof, it's hard on you. But I'm telling you now, it's the only way you're going to move forward from where you are. You will learn how to love. You will learn how to love, and if you don't, you're going to be in a hard place. <laughs> you have to. You don't understand. They've done this, and they've done this, and I, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Unconditional love coming. Yes. And y'all heard it. Y'all heard me when I said it last Sunday, was it? Y'all heard it. And those of you that didn't are here now. You're hearing it now. You will, you will be responsible for it because you know it's God. You know, his, you know it's his word. He said it, if you don't forgive, he can't forgive you. That means you're, you're going to let somebody else send you to hell. You're going to hell because somebody else made you angry. You're going to hell because you don't want to love your in-laws. How dumb is that? Yes, ma'am. Yep, and he will. Yeah, exactly. So you have to know, he's not taking it off. Mm -mm, he's not taking it off. In fact, you're going to love each other so good. God, love it. Woo, it's going to be so nice. They call this the first church of mush. They so mushy in there, they love each other. Always hanging on each other and hugging their neck. Oh, it's disgusting. 
It doesn't, it doesn't take that, but I'm going to tell you something. They'll know, that, they'll know by your softness that that's what it is. They won't have to see you acting stupid. I'm telling you, they will know by your softness and by the, the words that you say and the attitude, and, the, and it's going to come forth every time. Absolutely. Hallelujah. And while I'm at it, since I'm decreeing things anyways, glory. You can take this one too. There's going to get a spirit of generosity on you. Each and every one of you is going to get a spirit of generosity. And I'll tell you, when you hear about somebody in need, it's just going to kill you if you can't go and get fix it for them. I mean, servant's heart's going to come forth. And I'll tell you, some of, some of you may not even want it, don't like it. Too bad. It's coming. It's coming. You might as well get an idea that you're going to love it. Hallelujah. I was talking to someone yesterday and they said, you don't understand. I looked at these, I looked at these people and they were hopeless and it broke my heart. Well, that's what it does. And I said, do you realize that's what I've done all my life is you look at people in need and it breaks your heart. You can't stand it. And it doesn't matter how they got where they are. None of that matters. I mean, they may have, they may have done something stupid. They may have, it may have been something that didn't have a thing to do with them and it just hit. But I'm telling you, it doesn't matter because the servant's heart says, just let me fix it. Whatever it is, let me fix it. Let me help them. And I'll tell you, if you're a self-centered little soul, you're about to get over it. Yes, I'm. Two thousand miles from home. Okay. What? It's the what, dear? Down by Fort Myers. Okay. It was an ugly place? Okay. <sighs> my, my. Sure. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Of course. <coughs> and so now you can have compassion for those that are in that place. And do you see what God has done? You didn't have anybody, and now you have this whole family. God is so awesome. He loves you so good. Yes, I do, darling. Yeah, I do. Yes, it does. That's, but that's what you're for. That's, what you, that's why you have a mouth is so that you can tell them how much God loves them. You keep right, just keep right on doing it because that's, that's part of, that's part, he's put him in front of you for a reason. Hallelujah. So you found out now though that God is so swift. If you'd only known then what you know now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there are lots of people that are in that place and not only that place but there are people who are, have been addicted to, to drugs or alcohol or whatever, and they've done bad things, and, and, it's, and it's a terrible place to be. 
but this is what he said. This is what you're going to take care of. This is what you're for. You're supposed to be out there ministering to them instead of turning your nose up and walking the other way. You're not supposed to turn your nose up and walk away. You're supposed to welcome them in. Really? Yeah. So God is about to change your heart. Don't raise your hands now. This would not be a good time. I'm just speaking something. How many of you know you have a stingy spirit? <clears throat> and, and it's selective. Some people you can be nice to, some people you can be nice to, and other people you can't. That's about to change. God's about to change it. Because I'll tell you right now, you've got people that are praying. God's tearing down all the stony places. This church is about to burst forth. And there's going to be buds that are going to be blooming. And I have a bunch of blooming idiots in here. And I have a bunch of bloomers, late bloomers even here. But we're going to have a bunch of bloomers in here because, because God is going to change the flesh around so the flesh is smaller than the spirit. And you will be looking at your, your flesh man and saying, you can either come along or I'll leave you in the dust. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you need to be praying in your prayer language so that God can speak to you. And he will. And he will because he wants to fulfill the call that he's placed on your life. I'm going to dismiss you because we need to, well, some of you need to get out of here. Um, I want you to stand to your feet and let's pray. Father, we just praise your name. I thank you, Lord, for the spirit of truth. Lord, I thank you for your ministry, the ministry of your spirit this day. Lord, the lives that are being helped, the things that are being changed, Lord, that your church is maturing. The family of God is coming to a place where they care for one another and all those round about them. Lord, I praise and thank you that there will be no need left undone. There will be no one left behind. And Lord, there will be no judgment, but Lord, there will be intercession instead. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, that there, there is a, a spirit of helps coming upon the household of faith, Lord, where they will, they will really want to help one another in whatever area it is. Lord, we'll give you praise and glory for what you've done and the fact that your name is being exalted in this house. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen.